You did a good job. All right. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll call the meeting to order here. I think well, we have everybody here currently. It looks like um, I think we got Owen and Jesse on. I think saw Jesse in the background there somewhere. And then uh, Jerry Thomas uh, looks to be everybody that I see in the participants. Yep. Um, currently. So uh, first on the agenda, I'm going to have to flip back and forth because I have no idea where I put my packet. Went and picked it up from Therese and lost it. So, oh okay, uh, I'm um, flipping back and forth my screens here. So, uh, first is to approve the agenda. Um, if anybody has anything uh, that they want to change, I think the only thing I was thinking of maybe if um, I don't know how we do it, but I mean typically we talk about the uh, the dedication page and a you know. <laughs> do it at the end of the meeting. We call it an executive session, but a private session that way. We can do it at the end of the meeting when everybody else signs off. Sure. So Maybe fine. we'll just save that to the end. I mean, it is on the, um, it is on the agenda. So that's not an addition. Okay. Uh, but other than that, I didn't see anything else. Anything else that needs to be added to that? No, it looks good. Okay, just need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. This evening we don't have any appointments, so we will move right to public comment. So if there's anything uh, that's not on the current agenda for this evening that, um, you know, at this point I know Jerry's on for his piece probably. Uh, if there's anything else, uh, Jesse Owen? I don't see anybody else that's on. So um, if there is anything that somebody wants to uh, bring up at any point, feel free to, you know, put a message in the um, messaging piece and then Teresa and myself will, uh, will uh, bring it to everybody's attention at an appropriate time. So first on the agenda, there's an appointment for Jerry Tom Thomas to the Equity and Inclusion Committee. Hey, there is a, his yep. information was in our packet. Yes, it was. I received an email, which I included. And um, Jerry was telling about, talking a little bit about himself and says he's been a resident of Bethel since um, 2018. And he is um, currently attending the um, uh, Vermont Law School, sorry. So I know last time we had talked about, um, I, I, if I remember right, we were at, does it sound like eight members? I think that sounds about right. Yeah. Would this be the ninth member then? Um, I think so. And then has has the committee, um, either Therese or Owen, um, has the committee decided on what the, the size of the group would look like or feel like? I don't point. think that they they had as of yet it hadn't been a conversation but I mean I think right. that you would probably my thought would be you'd probably try capping it at nine for a while just to see you know because eventually it's going to get too big and you're not going to be able to get things done or there's going to be too many people so you know we can wait and see how that how it's going along and just can maybe check in in six months or something and see how they feel yeah. is going and maybe at that point everybody's not participating maybe something has come up and somebody has to step down and so, have they had a couple of meetings and yes, whatnot, yep. and organizational? Have, yes, and the minutes have been in your packet. Yep. So um, they've had minutes and agendas. So they meet again in January. And um, could so always, you know, going forward, could always have some alternate members. Um, you know, just like some of the newer um, committees that do form or have formed over the years, usually there's a lot of traction early, and then you start to get some membership that, that dissolves. So, um, you know, it's always good as you find someone, someone might move out of town or, or just decide not to be on it anymore and, you know, maybe have some alternate members that you could appoint at any time, but. Right. Um, there's no reason why someone couldn't go to a meeting if they had some concerns to voice. No. Or an idea to They're all public. So yeah. they should attend and, and participate. They can participate. They just, you know, don't yeah. know and that's no big deal. And, and you might find as the committee gets going throughout, um, you know, a few meetings or a year, whatever, you might find that some of the members might just rather be, you know, community members that come and voice rather than be, 
in the committee too so yeah so Lindley sent us all a message saying she had to sign out and back in because her mic wasn't working so ah. <laughs> you'll chime back in in a minute I guess we'll send Dave over to do the IT work. <laughs> <laughs> So well, I, don't know, I have problems, I have to get the wife out. <laughs> so, so unless we have any, uh, well, I'll wait for... Uh, Does Jerry have any? To questions? jump back on. But unless we have any other further discussion, um, I just need a motion to appoint Jerry Thomas to the Equity and Inclusion Committee. Does Jerry have any questions or comments he wants to make? or? Uh, no questions at the moment. I apologize. My camera decided not to work today, <laughs> um, but I do look forward to helping out in any way I can. Uh, I thank Jesse and Owen to turning me on to this committee and for you all for the work that you've done so far. And I, yeah, I just look forward to uh, helping out in any way I can. Thank you. Great. Happy to have you. Okay. Did, did I get a motion on that? I make a motion. Okay, and a second. A second. Okay, Dave, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> right. Kelly's and. <clears throat> Just trying to delay a little bit, see if Lindley gets back on here. Yeah. Maybe she's switching laptops or something. She's usually the one to help me if I have if I have problems. <laughs> well, next week we'll all have problems because all the kids will be on remote learning again. They'll be clogging up all the bandwidth in town. Oh, that's right. That's right. There she comes. Is it working, Lindley? Will you hear me? Yes. <laughs> I can now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said a bunch of stuff before and nobody ever responded, so I just thought you were going <laughs> to. <laughs> um, glad it worked, thanks. <laughs> so all you missed out, Lindley, um, is we uh, appointed Jerry to the Equity and Inclusion Committee. Um, didn't feel that you had any reservations for that, so we went I ahead. Agree with Gary. Be a good and, and then we were stalling for time to see if you we were going to jump back on. So we are. Um, so next on the list, we we have a couple of lister. Uh, one is to uh, request to hire Mimi Bernstein as an assistant lister. Um, it's being listed that. <laughs> yeah, it's being listed that way as a lister. Mm -hmm. uh, just because she is not a citizen of the town of Bethel. So um, in order to um, correctly do it, we'd have to you know, hire her rather than appoint her. Um, and I think either Therese or Judy or can tell you, you know, that she's got a, you know, higher, a higher level of um, training and yeah, it was all in the packet. Louise put together some nice packets about Mimi and about Judy. And um, and it was interesting. What Louise had given was a nice um, a background. She had these requirements for listers, and she had them listed as level one, level two, level three, level four. And apparently, Louise <clears throat> and another lister prior had worked on these. And then the state actually ended up adopting something very similar, which stages listers. So, um, I think it's good information. I met Mimi. She's very nice and a uh, young lady. And she has, you know, had been a lister in Bethel before when you went through the last reappraisal. And she has a full-time job elsewhere. But, and she also works in Randolph. Um, but she's looking for about 10 hours a month, very computer savvy. So um, hopefully she will also be able to do some more training. Maybe, um, you know, I'm sure teach Judy some tricks, you know, that Mimi has learned over the years of the software and, and, um, which is nice. So she's not obviously, like you said, she can't be a lister. So I just said assistant to the listers, I'm trying to be creative, put her in the office. So so 
So if nobody has any questions, um, we would be looking for a motion to hire her for about for 10 hours a month at $20 an hour. Okay, there's second. No okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. You're going to have to speak up, Lindley. We can hardly hear you. Lindley, we can't hear you, but mm -hmm. you're, you're very soft spoken tonight. <laughs> she always is. <laughs> and, and then, you know, kind of to go along with this is. Um, to right size the pay structure that we currently have with the listers is, um, and based on some of the classes that Judy's taken is to, uh, the next was um, to right size Judy's pay um, to $18 an hour effect as of the seventh. So it'll be back dating it a week, two weeks. <clears throat> so I just- I will abstain from this. I will abstain from this. So moved. <laughs> okay, moved by Paul. Get a second. Second. Only second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Randy? Is that any better on the volume? Yeah. Yeah, much better. And, we, and we, uh, next up, we have a motion to authorize the town manager to expend funds for the right White River or the the Vermont River Conservancy. So um, we had, to the ability to purchase fund. Yeah, so that's the money they'd fundraised, and I did speak to Mary Floyd to make sure she was comfortable with that um, because uh -huh. Vermont River Conservancy is seven thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars. And Gensburg and Greaves is two hundred forty-five dollars for our title insurance. Um, I don't know what Stitzel, Stitzel, Page, and Fletcher's bill is just yet, um, but they had eight thousand three hundred and seventy-seven dollars in that fund. So um, certainly Mary was happy to spend, you know, have the money spent. Um, that was what it was fundraised for to acquire the property or to help Vermont Rivers and Conservancy acquire the property. So um, I had you know, emailed back and forth with her and then we chatted on the phone. So um, she was all good with, with that. But since they come from a capital fund, despite the fact they're fundraised, I just would rather have it in the minutes that you most, that you approved the expenditure, so. So Therese, I had a question looking through the, um, the, the project expenses and revenues there. Yep. Um, and I, it's been a few years since, I can't remember what, you know, which grant paid what percentage of what total or, or paid, but, but didn't include that. But there's a piece in there that says the town of Bethel, $10,180. Right. And that's what you guys had agreed to from the start. And then, and we right. had already paid $2,450 of that. And it was also out of this fund, I believe that they had fundraised was where that money also came from. Um, because they had, Mary had done really well with donations from. Oh, Florida. gotcha. Okay. So yeah, that's where it. Had Maybe happened. I was just looking at it wrong. I thought we were looking at ten thousand one hundred eighty plus another. Oh yeah, you know what it was. Hundred. I was like, man, that doesn't sound right to me. So it is deceiving because it says ten thousand one eighty. Then he wrote over here, paid to date, and then the remaining. Gotcha. <clears throat> so, um, so it's like just the remaining about. balance of what we had authorized prior that we need to yep, get the ten thousand and i don't have like i said i don't have the stitzel page and fletcher bill yet that'll come next month i'm sure i mean that's a common closing fee is it just a closing fee or uh for stitzel page and fletcher yeah the i don't oh their bill will be because they they didn't do the title search somebody else did but he reviewed it just to make sure it was protecting our interests so it'll be some yeah. legal fee from david rue from there so it's probably seven, eight hundred dollars or less. My God, I would hope not that. I would hope not, yeah. but you know, okay. paid a lot more an hour than we do, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And he was the one who suggested we get title insurance. So we, for 250 bucks, it seemed like, mm -hmm. we might as well, ensure, make sure our title, you know, that we had insured that um, the uh, research and stuff for the title insurance. So it kind of made sense just to protect our investment. Okay. Yep. No. So that makes sense for me now. I just, I was looking at it as we already paid 10,000. I was at first too. And I was like, Ooh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not what we agreed to. <laughs> no, it was not. 
was a weird the way it was laid out there. Okay. So I'm heading back to my thing. So I just need a motion to allow Therese to expend the funds there um, of the 7,700. Uh, now I got lost with oh, the- The 7,730 plus the 245 and then whatever Stitzel, Page and Fletcher's bill will be. So basically just expend the funds from- Yeah. And I think, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we've already kind of agreed to the fund be prior. It's just a matter of paying it now, so. It's just nice when you're spending money out of other than, you know, capital funds that it's in there and in the minutes and then when the auditors look through it, it's, it's right there. Now, the the other question I had, I know we have a motion or trying to get a motion on the table here. Um, so out of that 7,700, there was some talk about there was some donation money. It was all donation money, all the money that you had that you've paid i don't believe you so the 20 whatever hundred dollars that we paid to date was the donation money yep because remember they came okay. a while ago and we and you guys agreed to pay for a portion of the appraisal mm -hmm. so um that also came out of that fund so that 24.50 that we paid to date that was the donation yep. money Okay. That came out of there. So she had raised quite a bit of money because the 2450 came out of there and she still has, you know, 8,800 something. I just flipped the page over. Um, oh, there's still 8,377 in that fund and you've expended the 24 before that. So yeah, they had done a great job fundraising. So we'll move on your motions first. What would they do with the remainder of that fundraising? Are they, get, are they looking to do some other projects on the land? Um, by the time we take the 88 and we take out the 7730, the 245 for the title insurance and whatever Stitzel Page and Fletcher's bill is left, mm -hmm. they may use any of it left towards maybe a kiosk or something, whatever gotcha. land down the road. I don't know. But Mo, okay. If you, if you didn't hear a Mo moved. Second. Okay, Lindley second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I know there was some talk about potentially putting a kiosk there and when we yeah. talked about this a couple of years ago and that might actually be spearheaded by the conservation committee maybe? Yeah, yeah. yep. So yeah, since Mary's the chair of that committee, yeah. Might be able to get Lindley's uh, workshop folks to involved on that. Okay, you never know. All right, and next on, I was just checking to see if we had anybody else jump on. Can't seem to get my thing back on. There we go. I think I'll just make the kids haul lumber across from the school to build it over there. I like it. Well, We're just gonna test. I like to make the kids haul lumber everywhere. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Why not? They'll do it. Uh, next on, we have the revolving loan fund committee's recommendation to defer Kevin Barry's payments for three months due to COVID. Uh, I was just checking to see if Kevin Barry was on, but doesn't look it. Uh, no, he had he had called, and so I I had um, Carol catch him and call him, and so as you can see with the note in the packet, mm -hmm. he. Carol called Kevin and then he talked to his committee and and they agreed to grant grant the request. So obviously um, that's their recommendation. He knows that you guys have to approve it. Um, so um, I want to make sure that we get something in writing from Kevin, obviously agreeing to increase his amortization schedule. Um, the other option maybe, I know there was some concern about that it's taking quite a while for the Levere block to become developed. So you have, this will be six months. If you give him this extension, you would have given him another three before mm -hmm. um, tagging on to his amortization schedule is maybe you ask him for, you know, a schedule, you know, what, what is he clarifying? Needing? Therese, just to clarify, the Blossom block is the one that's still under development. The Levere block is the one that the sandwich shop is in. Oh, okay, because yeah, that's the one he that's the one he has a loan for, is the Le Levere block. Yeah, so that's okay. the 
that's fully developed. Um, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I had them backwards then. I'm sorry. I was thinking. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess we can't tie the loan to that then. That was my thinking was if you're going to extend it, then figure it out. But um, the only thing I would want is if, is if you're going to approve the, obviously approve the revolving loan fund committee's recommendation. I don't have a problem with that, but I think that we need to make sure we get it in writing to Kevin. Um, that way he knows we're extending his amortization schedule. And then maybe it's just, I can send him an email and ask him, you know, what's his timeline on the on the blossom block, you know, to see if he has any more potential customers. Does he, when is it going to be open or does anybody know? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can ask him that separately. Um, when I send him an email about this. We would be interested to know what his plans are as well for that <laughs> building. Yeah. And also, is this, you said the loan is with the revolving loan fund. That's a town fund. Yes. Yep. I have one question, and we may not know the answer here because none of us are the loan fund committee members, but um, is this handled, so the deferments, are these handled similar to the way bank loans are done where you're still liable for interest, you just pay you pay the interest as back payments when you start making payments again. So you make a whole bunch of interest only payments um, or is it just he's deferring and when he starts back up, it just pushes his whole amortization schedule back that many months. It just pushes his whole, amor I think it's just pushing his whole amortization schedule back three months. So he's still gonna, and, and the payments aren't huge either. So um, he doesn't owe a big balance. Um, so it's, I believe that when I spoke to Carol, it was basically they're just pushing it out, basically saying we're not going to pay anything now. Then we're going to add three more months. I did to his amortization schedule. Now we'll add three more months to his amortization schedule. So, but I'll verify with Carol Ketchum what he, because we, we he and I talked briefly about it a few months ago when we, he did it the first time. So I'll double check with him and then um, I'll double check with Carol what he promised him. <laughs> But I, that was my impression. He was basically just giving him, going to tack it on later. Yeah, I mean, I, I think as a board member, it's kind of, you know, it, it's kind of difficult to understand, you know, what's behind the, um, behind the motion to, to, you know, defer some payments here, but you know, but the revolving loan fund committee is a committee that we appoint to, you know, kind of go through and do all that uh, research and make the recommendations for us, which, you know, Carol and his team have done a really good job in the past. So exactly. He, cause he called, um, you know, I just put him direct contact with Kevin. That way Kevin wasn't telling mm -hmm. me, I wasn't telling Carol. <clears throat> so I know Carol and he had the conversation and I'm sure Carol mm -hmm. asked him all the questions, and, you know, but I, but I agree with, you know, Therese, I know, you know, this board anyways, you know, anytime we've had, um, you know, either we've done some water or sewer um, deferral or anything like that, we've always asked kind of of a schedule of, you know, a progress schedule of the piece of property and, you know, what do you think, you know, will it be six months, will it be three months, you know, a year, what are you looking at to, uh, you know, either finish your renovations or pay off your loan or, you know, so would be nice to have something in writing i think on that yeah uh, i'll just pick his brain about the blossom block since he doesn't have a loan with us on that one i don't believe i'll double check um but okay. i'll see um, i'll just ask him what, you know, what it, what's going on and with that and then um when i reach out to him about mm -hmm. it in writing about his um increase in his amortization schedule and i'll also follow up with carol about that he's what his deal is on the interest and what he promised him well, yeah, because I mean, oh, go ahead, Dave or Paul. Therese, what's the what's the vehicle for that whole loan? Does he pay the bank, or does he pay the town, or how does that all? They pay the uh, town. Whoever has a revolving loan fund pays the town. Hmm. Pays us. They pay us directly. Okay. So what, if we have, we're actually, I don't know what the deal was, but I would think that they're should be something in there as an incentive to move along that if you let give them 
a total of six months off with no interest, no payment, no nothing. What's his incentive to keep going? Well, obviously he has collateral. There's an, a loan there. It's a, it's a legitimate mortgage. So we can collect on it just like a bank could. So he probably has collateral on his loan and we could, um, that's why I want it in the minutes and I want to, you know, send him an extension uh, or something, get something from him in writing, excuse me, about his amortization schedule. But it's a legitimate loan. It's recorded in the land records. And I'm sure that my assumption is that the property itself is the collateral. Yeah. So if he had to Understood, but if, if he's, yeah, okay. All right. So, you know, I'm not sure the circumstances in which he, you know, he just said with COVID, um, I'm not sure what his circumstances were that he explained mm -hmm. to Carol as the chair of the revolving loan fund committee. Yep. But I'll get a clarification and then put it in my town manager's report next time once I speak to Carol. Okay. And then we'll have a, I'll know. And, you know, this revolving loan fund is, you know, one of, one of the tools we have at the town's level to, you know, promote, you know, vibrant, you know, downtown, you know, renovations to buildings or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, it, it's definitely a tool that we want people to take advantage of, but yep. it's, also, it's also, we want to see the outcome of, of that. Well, it seems like if the, if the loan is on the yeah, yeah. If the loan's on the Levere block, then he's already developed that. So right. the only other loan we have out is with Tozier's. Um, everybody yeah. else has paid off their loans. So okay. we have a good history, which is good. It doesn't look like anyone's ever, you know, left you defaulted. So, which is nice. Yeah. All right. So we just need a motion to, motion to accept the, Revolving Loan Fund Committee's recommendation to defer Kevin Barry's payments for three months due to COVID. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next up is our June 30th, 2020 audit. I'm sure you all had a fun time going through all the pages of the audit. Well, it says draft on it, but I had gone through <laughs> it already and, and approved it and sent it to Stitzel Page mm -hmm. and Fletcher. And I did, um, they should be getting the transfer station audit done before the transfer station board's next meeting. That was my request of them. And we still we need to do our single audit. So I'm sure that they will get a hold of me when they have time in their schedule. And that's because we spent over 775,000 between FEMA and the drinking water state revolving loan fund. So um, that's once you spend over, it used to be 500,000. Now I believe it's 750 or 775. So that's still ongoing, but this is the regular audit itself for the, um, town and as you can see if you look um that the net position of the town increased you can see that we had actually um we actually made a to made a little money but um you can tell before what our fund balance was in the past and then what it became mm -hmm. but if you look at all of our governmental funds uh, we were ahead by two hundred and fifty thousand dollars yeah Good. Yep. Looked like looked like overall our revenues fell short. Uh, well, when I say revenues, our localized revenues fell short um, by like six thousand or something like that. Um, looked like we still had, based on last year, anyways, we had about a hundred thousand dollars in uncollected tax money, I believe, by looking at it. Yeah. Of course, who knows? Some of that could have hit the very next day. Yeah. Um, so it's a snapshot and. At that time, I mean, it looked like our cost overall came came in ahead uh, two hundred and fifty six thousand or something. So it's about about a quarter million dollar <clears throat> um, balance. Which you know we had talked about the last couple of years that you know, uh, and I believe it was in one of the recommendations of the audit maybe two years ago, Therese, where you know not having a fund balance in the town is is a detriment, and you know if you have to keep borrowing money to do payroll or pay a school, 
you know, well, the good thing too was once so, we, basically we were the reason that we were running the way we were in the deficit position was because of that before we you know kept renewing that short-term loan on your debt which you originally thought was because of um tropical storm irene and then once we realized it wasn't um and we financed it into a long-term debt that made a big difference there too mm. so um yeah i just did the delinquent tax um page for the town report that's what i've been working on our pages for the town report and so it looks like i think in january i'm going to have Dietrich start um going through all the accounts that we know are going to have to go up for tax sale and then you know get that process started um and you know there's a process to it that we do and there's some properties that um i i know that well those two properties didn't sell last time um and i have another that find that someone i know has i just recently found out someone's abandoned so we're going to move forward with the tax sale we didn't do it this last year um but we definitely will have to again to you know we'd gone through and i'd done a huge one originally put up 40 some odd properties for tax sale mm -hmm. narrowed it down to 11 sold all but two um and then we had created deals with a lot of people so it's given people some time to make sure they've lived up to those um deals and some have some haven't so it's time to do another start the process for another tax sale and i and i noticed on there i guess you call it the recommendations for yep you know internal control um audit because i didn't see anything major that stuck out um is there anything therese that um that the office is going to be doing different than before I, I didn't see any major items no it, some of them were fun. a couple errors but um reconciliation of balance sheet accounts is always up there because um you know if i'm off by something then then and they fix it then they obviously they write you up for that trustees of public funds investments i've never recorded i never we haven't done it in the past and i haven't done it since i started so their recommendation was basically have carol bring his books in every quarter and then I can do a journal entry to keep as I wait. And then at the end of the year, he brings his books in and they were making the entries. So yeah. that was one of the things that they recommended. Um, the authorization of journal entries um, was a lot of it. I was just doing them because I was making the corrections. So I'm trying to make sure that if I make a correction because somebody coded something wrong, get there, make sure that the department head coded, you know, initials my journal entry. Mm -hmm. um, then the other one was department head approval and coding of invoices. And I actually was, I, I wrote to, to one of the guys and was like, what are you talking about? You know, we have this stamp that I, you know, what everybody signs. And I was like, what is the sample? Well, he pulled, they pulled a sample and it was a couple things from FEMA and it was actually me. I had coded them. I had put dated them. I had written the amount I had, and I just didn't initial it. And I'm like, Oh my God. Mm. So, <laughs> so, I'm not making that mistake again. So anyways, it was me and I went back and looked at the invoices and it was all my handwriting and what, I, and I had coded some bills, but I hadn't put my initials on them despite it being my handwriting. So I was like, all right, fair enough. So overall, I mean, it was a good audit. It was a lot better. It was the best audit I've had since I came to Bethel. So, yep. It looked pretty good. I would say the ones I've read through in the last five years, this definitely yeah. was cleaner. Deepest um, audit we've ever had. Too. I had a couple of questions. Of course. Um, Go ahead. Chris, you actually stole one of my questions here. I was going to ask about the, the recommendations at the end. Yeah. Uh, but the other item that jumped right out at me was the, there's 171000 some odd dollars due from the transfer station. Yep. And that actually changes every, on a regular basis. Actually, Pam and I just paid that today. Um, what happens is we, just like we do for water and sewer, water and sewer also have a due to the general fund. So the transfer station um, does. And so what Pam and I do is usually once a month, we transfer money from the transfer station's checking account, which is they make their own deposits of all their, you know, they do the deposits and take them directly to Mascoma. So we print out, I print out a report off of Nemeric that's the due to, due from that shows what they owe us for making their pay, covering their payroll, covering their accounts payable. And what Pam and I do is we, we um, transfer as much money as we can out of their checking account into ours. So we had done that beginning of December and then we just did it today. And I think we were able to transfer another 
oh, I can't remember. I want to say 20, I can't remember how much we transferred today. Anyways, I guess I won't hazard a guess, but it, it buys it down. So then what happens is that number, as soon as Pam does pay um, accounts payable this week, that number will go back up. So it's a constant fluctuation. Uh, the Tran Bethel Royalton Transfer Station is board is well aware of it. Um, whenever we transfer money, I give them copies of the transfer and so that they have it for their accounts. And this budget that they have passed actually has them paying us. They've actually scheduled, budgeted some money in there, about $15,000 um, to come to us. And obviously, if we ended up making a deal and going with Casella or Myers or somebody, we would get paid off. So it's the same process for water sewer. They just haven't been self-sufficient. So and that I think number is just a snapshot of a moment in time. Absolutely. Yep. And I think if you were, Paul, if you were looking for more of a, you know, more of an exact number of what is owed, it, it's a little bit above a hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay. It's, um, and I, you know, as of today, it, like, I think it was a little bit under and, um, but that'll change. Right. And there's, when I look back in the history of the audits, it was actually one year Bethel owed them $9,000, but otherwise it's always been that they owe us. And it's just happens to be what it looks like at June 30. Mm -hmm. But then I run it on a monthly basis for um, Pam and then we see what they have for money and we take almost all of it. And then <laughs> so, uh, that's the way it goes, but they're aware of it. And it's one of the reasons we need to do the rate increase. And, and Therese, I know we talked about it before, but what was the recommendation for having for a reserve um, for a town of this size? I know we talked about before, and I can't remember if it was like a quarter million or three, 400,000. Yeah, sometimes they say it's a percentage of your budget and everybody has a little bit different take on what it is. Um, so it can be, and a lot of times what you'll do is if you have an amount, Sometimes you'll write a policy for that. How are you going to deal with your fund, undesignated fund balance or your surplus? Are you going to um, leave some, you know, alone for like a rainy day fund, which is always my recommendation is have a little cushion there in case something goes haywire that you haven't budgeted mm -hmm. for and you have an overrun. The other thing is some people use it for um, if they have an employee that you need to pay out, maybe you have a lot of leave time coming up and you're going to pay out for that. So, um, you know, there's different recommendations on what that can look like. And sometimes too, you have to be careful because sometimes it's just not cash. It looks like you have this big surplus when in fact it's tied up in equipment or something. So, mm -hmm. Well, I know in the past we, you know, wouldn't even have thought of having this discussion of what we would do with surplus money, yeah. uh, <laughs> but you know, it might be something for us to think about here this coming year of, you know, what is either by a percent or a dollar amount that we should keep. Yep. Anything above and beyond that would, you know, we would on a yearly basis, uh, you know, make a recommendation to the voters of what we'd put that towards, you know, uh, paying well, long term debt or, you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, I can ask uh, Rick at Sullivan and Powers his recommendation for a fund balance. I knew no, um, another town, what we used to do sometimes is we would use, we would take money from the undesignated fund that balance. And if we had quite a bit, we'd transfer it into capital funds, maybe a road fund or a building fund, or right. a lot of times we would put $10,000 back in the budget as a revenue to say, we're going to reduce tax, you know, reduce the bill by the budget by 10 grand to kind of give some money back to the taxpayers. So, um, it's new for us to have a surplus. So I'll, I'll definitely get some recommendations from Rick and then over the next you know, few months, we can talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that would be a good idea. Just because we were talking about it last meeting, um, I'm curious if one of the things that maybe we should think about putting that some of that surplus towards is the reappraisal fund. Could be, that's a good point. Yeah, I'll make a note. Um, I'll ask him what his recommendation is that we keep there and then I'll look and see how much of it is actually cash that we have and then, um, but reappraisal. And if we do that, then we will, what we'll do is we'll do it at a town meeting and the, <clears throat> oh, maybe this one, maybe not. And you mm -hmm. just make it as an article. So the voters vote to probably won't do it in this one just because it's Australian ballot, but. Um, I think it yeah. showed that there was about 165,000 or something in the reappraisal fund mm -hmm. already. Yep. And um, which is good because it's going to cost us an expense. I did talk to Louise again about that today. And um, same thing she'd given me. She thought she had a draft RFP for that. And 
it'd be good to get that out and then maybe even get in somebody's queue, you know, maybe a couple of years before they get to you, but at least you'll have an idea of what your cost is and an estimate and be able to save for it. So Louise and I were talking about that today for a few minutes. Yeah, that, that definitely should be a, an ongoing agenda item for, you know, 2021. Yeah. Uh, be a good one. All right. Does anybody have any other questions in regards to the audit? Something comes up later if you didn't get through the whole thing or whatever, just certainly can email me or call me and happy to answer any questions. Next up, we had uh, discussion in regards to potential bond vote for town garage. So is, we're just, I don't think we should do it at town meeting this year. I think that we'll have to do a bond vote later. Mm -hmm. It seems like we need to sit down and I need to get a hold of a couple towns. I know Chelsea built a uh, town garage recently mm -hmm. and um, I'll talk to Chris Bump and ask him who he knows that's built one and, and get their RFPs. And then we'll have to make a decision how we're going to do it. Are we going to do an RFP for an architect and then have the architect, you know, do the groundwork. And then obviously they'd put the bid documents together and then we would go out to bid that way. Or are we going to do a design build service in which case, and then are we going to do cost plus with a guaranteed maximum or how are we going to do it? So I just need to spend a little more time doing some research on that. Um, and I just don't feel like, I feel like if we were going to do that, um, people are going to want to see the image, you know, exactly what we're going to do, mm -hmm. what would it look like? And I mean, I know what our cap is. I know what we can afford and we've backed into that number. Um, so I think um, we just have to decide what's going to be the best fit for, for Bethel, how we want to go about doing it. And it, and it may be just getting doing the traditional two-step which is the architect first and then going to bid after i'm concerned about metal because of covid how long you know if it will take a while to find that but i don't i don't know what that market's doing right now so well the other thing too right now is in some cases some of the building supplies are very expensive too so yeah uh, you so, know um, maybe going to the you know putting it out for design right now which will you know, buy us maybe half a year, um, you know, will give us a better opportunity to get materials at a more reasonable price. And, and the other thing too, is we have a hundred thousand dollars in the capital building fund. So we do have money we can spend now, you know, that we mm -hmm. can use to get that part done. And then we would bid later. I mean, uh, certainly our cap in my mind, our cap is, yeah. you know, 700,000 for the whole enchilada. We just can't, you know, we can, that's what we can afford to make a payment on. Um, is 700,000. And we thought we talked about buying that down to 600,000. Um, and, um, and, you know, so it'll be interesting to see. I'm, I wonder about some certain bells and whistles, you know, that's mm -hmm. going to change what the codes are going to change. Obviously, there's energy codes, building codes, there's also some safety, you know, stuff that we do not have. And I wonder by tearing out we're leaving the structure itself the framing of the original garage but then doubling it in size and then encasing it all in one beautiful new shell but i, I don't know how that's going to work and that's why we need an architect because i am not up on all the codes and uh, standards to make sure that you know we're gonna do everything we need to do but it seems like that what we can afford and which we've talked about is that loan payment would be basically what we were putting aside in the capital building fund that's the loan payment. And um, it just doesn't seem to me that we could spend any more than that. But is that isn't that gonna leave us shy though in that in that fund if we use that use that allocation? I think there's about two hundred thousand in there, I think was the um, when I did my spreadsheet last was looking at it, do my stuff for town report, or there will be with our next um, the pot with this year's money going into it. So we have set aside the money, so it's there. So it won't, we won't be putting that fund into the hole, no. And I, I think it's definitely good to, you know, I mean, if we were talking about, you know, maybe investing a hundred or $200,000 into the garage, maybe we could move forward and kind of build it as you go type deal. But definitely if we're thinking about some substantial amount of money, you know, I know as a taxpayer, I would want to be able to see the plans and look at the plans and what is it going to look like and feel like and smell like and you know 
Yeah, exactly. And I'm hoping that we would be able to, as a town, we certainly have the equipment to do it. So if, I'm not sure if we would necessarily demolish the addition, um, but we could certainly prep the ground for concrete to pour, you know, so there's only, there's dirt and then some blacktop. So we will have to dig that out. So it's a real foundation, you know, based on the other side. I don't see why we can't do that ourselves. And we also going to have to relocate the water line because mm -hmm. it comes in the back of the garage. So we know where that is. Um, so it seems as though to me that hopefully the road crew would be able to do some of that work because we have the equipment. And well, if we get the RFP out for design and, you know, that process, maybe we'd get something back by midsummer and, yeah. Yeah. and then maybe able to have a fall bond vote or something like that. Yeah, which, which would be good. And, and sometimes, frankly, bond votes are better on their own they're more apt to pass than to be tucked into an Australian ballot when people are already saying, okay, I got school tax, I've got town tax, where my experience has been, you're, sometimes you're, bit, you're more successful in a separate vote later. So you can get out and educate everybody and sometimes works better. Okay. Any other um, discussion on the tech garage? All right. I think we were just going to leave, like we had talked about, we're just going to leave the report dedication to the very end. Uh, the select board members will just stick around at the very end <clears throat> um, to talk about that. Normally, we kind of like to do it in secrecy and and surprise people on who we dedicate to. So I think we'll stick with that tradition. Um, so we have town manager's report. I know we dug through most of Teresa's goodies, but is there anything left in there? So, so one of the, um, let me look. Okay, so I guess it was, so we put out the list of how to do, there's some offices that have vacancies. Spit it out, Therese. So we have <laughs> some uh, elected officials. So we did put something out on Front Porch Forum, Facebook, and on our website, letting people know that obviously that Mo sadly is not going to run again for his seat. So there'll be a seat and Mo is a three year seat. So that will be open. Um, the listers that um, there's going to be one lister that's vacant, um, which it wouldn't be the end of the world if the select board appointed a lister because you, you want someone who has a very specific background to become a lister and has the time and everything to those skill set to do that. Um, so the consent of candidate forms are due, um, I believe it's January 14th. It's after our next meeting, a couple days after our next meeting. But we put that information out as well. So if you were a typical town that all your elected officials went by Australian ballot, what you would have to do is pass a petition. You'd have to get some, a certain amount of signatures and you get them to the town clerk. But um, that's the legislature waived that. So the only thing you have to fill out is a consent of candidate form and Chris filled his out. Basically, it's just what, you know, you're running for, a, if you're what seat you're running for, you know, how many year term it is, what town it is and how you want your name to appear on the ballot. And it has to be in by five o'clock um, on January the January 25th. Jan it's before the 25th. Well, it says on the sheet here, no later than 5 p.m. on Monday, January 25th. Mm. On, on what what you posted? Oh, is it, that doesn't that seems late. Or uh, maybe it was the 25th. Then for some reason I just uh, in my brain. Yeah, so it says 25th. 25th. Yeah. Okay. Well, then it must be the 25th. I thought it was like the 15th, so I'll double check um, just to make. I had a different date stuck in my head. But anyway, so you have to have the consent of candidate filled out, and you give it to the town clerk, and then when we make the ballot, that's what goes on the ballot. So it's a pretty simple process. Normally you are what I call a hoot and holler town. So you, somebody could just show up and run um, that day at town meeting and against you and you'd have no idea. This way you will know in advance. So that's one of the nice things. When I was an elected official, I always knew if someone was running against me or not, if you were running opposed or, or not. Um, for the record, I ran unopposed, but um, I was all nobody always told me no, I'm stupid enough to want the job. So, <laughs> so that's the way it goes. So it's a very simple form to fill out. Chris could tell you that. 
um, because he just filled it out. So um, if somebody wants to run for one of the seats, I did try to outline what people were already running. Like Chris was running for his seat. Pam will run for hers. Um, Louise is going to run for one of the Lister seats. Uh, you know, Stan Caprin is going to run for grand juror and uh, Jason town agent or vice versa. So I did try to spell that out. So people were, were, you know, understanding what was, what was out there and maybe who was running. And, and I know as a, a vote counter, it is, it is very nice when you don't have to deal with a bunch of write-ins because it will take us forever to count them all. Um, so I definitely would encourage anybody that wants to run for a position that get their name on the ballot because it just makes our life when we're counting ballots that night, that night so much easier, especially with COVID, you don't want to have to have a bunch of people kicking around counting ballots. So, right. And the good thing is machine will kick out anything that's got a handwritten. Right. But that uh, does stink. Uh, yeah. And, and people still have the right to do a write-in campaign, of course. Oh yeah. But yeah. yes, but you, you definitely want to discourage well, that. So if you, know somebody who's interested in running to be a lister or to be a um, whatever, who's running against one of the open, one of this other seats, just because somebody's running for it doesn't mean somebody else can't run against them. So, um, but if anybody wants to run for a seat, then we're trying to get that information out there and they can just call the town office or go to the website and um, get their forms filled out. So that was a question because Lindley, is that what you wanted to know, Lindley? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, just to run through it again. Yeah. So <clears throat> unlimited comp time and enough money to buy a pack of bubble gum. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. All the perks. Are here. <laughs> that's right. So um, the other thing was I had seen Mrs. Placey. Um, she came in the other day and I and it was after our meeting and um, she really she was um really wanting uh, to unload the property that we had talked about so um and she was like well what if we cleaned up the trash and you evicted them because she just doesn't want to go through all the hassle so i'm going to reach out to the nephew and she's just really wants to unload it i'm just gonna ask the nephew look you know what if you don't if you give it to the town for a dollar we'll clean it up and we'll evict the person but if you're going to charge us for it then you can evict and you can clean up your own trash um but i did have a conversation with mrs placey so i'm going to reach out to the nephew talk to him and have him call mrs placey so they're both on the same page because she had not yet spoken to the nephew is there and i can't remember who it was last time maybe it was dave or mo somebody had kind of thrown it out there that they may know somebody that does that kind of removal or but is there a way of maybe getting one of those people to maybe drive by the property and kind of winging a number on what it may cost us if we did take the property type deal, you know, so we well, could, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know what's in the outbuildings and what's in yeah. the trailer either. So, I mean, I know. you know, or assume the worst, I guess. Um, could be. Nice to know. Most trailers trailers the table and says that. Yeah. I mean, most trailers they demolish and, and they, they, they uh, sell the frame, I believe. Mm -hmm. They demolish them right no, there. That's all. It, yeah, they load it right into like, like you would a building. Wow. And, and then, of course, what you're left with is the frame, which they try to sell. Yeah. I mean, so granted, I any, I I mean granted anything that metal, usually you can get one of those dealers that'll come in and take all the metal for free or whatever. Right. Um, yeah. But. And of course, too, when the governor extended the extended the um, his executive order, he also extended the eviction, so you can't evict at this time. But it doesn't mean that if you're the owner, you couldn't go in and start cleanup. So if the town did own it, or with Mrs. Placey, she even though they're there, she could start cleaning it up. So I'm going to reach out to the nephew. Well, the other thing too, I mean, right. you know, even if she gave it to us for a dollar, I mean, it might cost us a lot to clean the place up. You know, like. Don't know what it would, but I would assume that whoever the tenant is that's there, probably a majority of the items that are on the property are probably theirs, you know? So you're going to get into that, you know, yeah. can you actually go in there and clean it up or, you know, type deal? It could be a, you know, I, I like the property, but I think it could be a, it could be a, a it's going to be a headache of trying to work through that process. Oh, it is. I think the eviction process is, is not cheap. I, th I think you're going to get into. I think you're going to spend a major part of fifty grand by the time you clean up and evict. Yeah. 
I'm serious. Um, I really think that's going to, it's going to cost that much money. Yeah, I think that's that's probably a very reasonable estimate, Dave. So yeah, it'd be it'd be nice to kind of know what it you know. I don't know if if anybody knows anybody does that type of work, but it'd be kind of yeah. okay. uh, Bill and McCullough's uncle did one from in Sh South Royal uh, trailer probably a little smaller and he did what Mo talked about you just smash the heck out of it put it in a dumpster or whatever and sell the frame and it was sixteen thousand dollars just to just for the trailer wow and that was like eight ten years ago right. so that's where my idea is coming from yeah what were you gonna say Mo Frank was gonna give that to us before he died yeah, and she still may. I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure what her, she just really wants to get out from under it. So um, let's, so I'll see, but yeah. And right now the eviction process, I mean, once, if somebody knows and they may want to move to the other thing is we don't know that, you know, we're all saying I'm, I'm using the term eviction, but maybe once they find out the town owns it, they may find another place to go and it may be very smooth. They may, you may not have to evict, they may just relocate. So is there, um, Therese, well, maybe I'll just talk to you on it later, but if there's an opportunity really to come to, uh, uh, an agreement on that property, maybe, maybe you and I could take a, or get permission to go take a look at the property and see what we really have involved there, you know? Okay. You bring in the hazmat suits. So, <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, I've been in that trailer. You want to. You want to wear the hazmat suits and watch out for the dog. All right. I'll well, bring Brady. We'll be good. There you go. We'll go outside only. But. but but it might be nice to just be able to look at the, you know, the outbuildings and. Yeah, like, exactly. So like and, I said, you know. I'll reach out to Mrs. Placey's nephew and have her, <laughs> him talk to her and we'll go from there and see what we're, what we're right. doing. But it would be nice to get it cleaned up and have open. I always ask Dylan too. He, he might know what it would cost to clean that place up too. Sure. <clears throat> All righty. And that was it for the town manager's report. That was everything. All right. Let me scroll back up here. And select board meeting minutes from the 14th. Did anybody have anything they wanted to amend or are they good to approve as written? We'll move. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. All right. Good, good. And, um, you know, other communications there, there was the solid waste board meeting minutes. Mo, anything, uh, anything big on the ice, you know, that requires our attention or? Not right now. We're we'll see how these new rate increases go uh, next week. We all might be in jail. I don't know. Other than that, it's uh, we're still looking at uh, Myers and uh, Casella uh, taking over the enterprise, but we haven't heard back from them yet. As far as I know, have we, Trees? No, no, nothing, Mo. I was wondering about you. I haven't. Okay. No, uh, Myers has only Myers has only been about a week. So now those, uh, you know, remind me again the with the new increase of car or the new pricing there, um, was that going to absorb the entire? we'll call it monthly deficit that it's running or is that going to just make up a piece of it or what, what's the projection on that? The projection was to cover the whole. I would say, right. So based on those, that price increase that it would cover the debt, the debt that it's, yeah, it's going to help rearages that it's been. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I would think that it would, I think that in some cases, um, there's some pieces that are going to be yet to be determined, like the three dollars per visit. Right. You know, we did an estimate on how many Jen and I did on how many people we see, how much that's going to generate to cover any losses. So anything that they can cover of their own, 
we're hoping will, yes, contribute to paying down what they owe a Bethel. Um, but we did make a, a stride by putting a payment in there too. So we do have a little bit of a cushion. So, but if they, if the food scraps, if that takes off, that would be good. If that's $2 a gallon, plus the bigger items, I think tires and couches and things that increased. Um, and then with the $3 per visit for the recycling, um, that should also generate, you know, enough money to at least, you know, to, to get them ahead. That's our hope. Yes. And yeah. they also made some cuts yeah, in the budget. Um, I thought it was a good budget that got approved. Yeah. Well, I know uh, yeah, we also, yeah, we also raised the tonnage of $10 a ton to the, anybody over the minimum is $10 a ton more. And we also raised on the Freon items. That's right. That cost us money to go to. Yeah, that, that's right. Thank you. Yeah, I forgot about those. So yeah, so I think it, you know, is it going to get out of the hole entirely? I don't know. I hope so, but we'll see. Some of it's, we estimated some numbers and we need to see how, what the turnout is for people that come. All depends on what we, you know, if, uh, if the recycling end of things we get more money for, that'll help out too. But it doesn't look that way right now because there's no money in recycling. Right. So it's, a, it's a loser. Yeah. Food scraps, I don't see why the state ever proved it the way they did without, you know, just dumping it onto us. I mean, that's, a, that's quite a cost for us for every month. Can't be free. Exactly. But that's just my opinion. No, but you're right. I mean, you're right. It was food scraps was a big expense, like wham, and nobody had any mm -hmm. clue <clears throat> what that volume of that was going to look like. So there's certain places we've made some assumptions, but at least we did, they did put $2 a gallon, enough money to, to cover the cost of it and handling it. So you, you right now it's up. Right now, we're, we're every week we're shipping eight forty-five gallons of food waste out of there, it, and and that's pushing it very very close on this on this end of the week. Sometimes we have to put it in smaller barrels. So that, there's a, there's a lot of gallons of food going out of there hmm. of food waste. That's amazing. I I'm really surprised. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe people would do more composting or but that's also hard if you're in the village so yeah i gotta rethink well, okay. i know brady found like composting pile so a lot of people that could compost on their own are bringing it in i've noticed that i mean i know where a lot of people live and they just bring it in yeah and there is oh, well. i think you still sell composters too so if people don't want to yeah. do build their own or something have something more enclosed yeah. Transfer, you can buy a uh, you can buy one at the transfer station too, and they had some nice. Yeah, ones. I think. Yeah, I think we sold. Out. I think we sold three in the last month. Mm. Kind of mm. helps. They were nice, contained. I think to keep pets and and um, wildlife out. So. And you, I was watching something uh, over the break here, and um, with the new federal administration getting ready to come in, you may see that the because um, I from what they were saying that the Chinese used to be our number one consumer of re recyclables. Mm -hmm. And through the tariffs that were going on between us and the Chinese, the Chinese stopped taking recyclables from the United States. And I guess the thought now with the new administration that if the tariffs get reduced, then the Chinese might be taking the, um, the recyclables once again. So maybe the recyclables will start to have a value again. I don't know, but. The, uh, the actual reason the Chinese didn't take it was because the product coming in was about 60% contaminated. So they had to get rid of it. So what do they do? They throw it in the ocean. Nice spot. So I mean, a lot of it, a lot of it wasn't the tariffs. It was, a lot of it was the consumer, what they were shipping over there. And that was one of the arguments I made today to people was reminding them, you know, if you going to recycle, you need to wash your recycling out because if Jen sends a load of recycling down and a lot of it's dirty, they back bill her for transporting that and dealing with it. So it becomes a cost. So mm -hmm. I think people need to, you know, there's plenty of signage there that tells you at the transfer station to rinse out and clean your recycling. But if people may not realize that if the, if the, 
they feel that the load is contaminated heavily, she gets back billed for that. That's right. And I, I work down there quite a little bit since Jen's been out. And I'd say between 40 and 50% of the recycling is garbage, trash. Yeah. People don't care. They throw in dirty stuff. They throw in diapers. The other day I dug out a whole bag full of diapers, used diapers. Yeah. You know? And the lady says, well, the box had number one on it. Yeah, the box is recyclable, not the innards. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Well, those are tech. Te so, I mean, <laughs> people yeah. don't read and they don't listen. Mm. They don't well, and, then it, and then it just ends up affecting everybody, right? Just like the free table and everything else. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it just, it's the 1% that kill it for everybody. Oh, yeah. I, but I don't know what it is about composting, but I know my dog, he left that composting in the corner of my property alone all year. But now that it has frozen, he's in that thing every day. So I don't know what it is, but frozen season, he he wants it now. There you go. <laughs> I, don't <know> what, <laughs> I don't know what it is. He drags it all over the yard now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you can figure that out. That's funny. Yeah, not funny, Therese, not funny. You need to buy a composter. <laughs> right. It's not funny, trust me. We sell them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I'm telling you. Maybe, maybe I'll uh, hire him out. There you go. Uh, anything else? Did I miss any other? Uh, let me see here. No, it just says other communications or any other business. Yeah, I didn't see any other communications in there, so. I don't think so. I mean, it was just what we put on the website. There was the um, yeah. couple of things that I just wrote FYI on. There was no uh, errors and omissions. There weren't any this year. I'm trying to get the poll stuff off the polls. That's an act of Congress. Yep, planning commission minutes. Yep, so just kind of a. Yeah, I saw that um, response there from Oh, it's Except nice. whoever it was. That's not even. I've gotten more emails about this now. There's basically, once they put the polls up, there's no timeline. For they don't care. To get off the poll. And I thought it was just consolidated, but it's consolidated and Comcast. So, and, and there's no order in which that, like, consolidated doesn't have to come off first, then Comcast. But nobody is in a big rush to get it done. Let's put it that way. So, I've sent the letter, I've emailed, I talked to the public service board. So they actually put out a complaint. Yeah, that got somebody's attention. I heard from somebody the next day. And um, the Lori, Lori from Consolidated, but it's still an ongoing. Well, according to that response you got back, that they, they're not even thinking about even starting it back up until springtime. Yeah, they're not. And, and they're not the only, only ones on there. So it's, it's, it's not yeah. going to manage to get done tomorrow. That's too bad. Can we give them some? Can we give them a certain amount of time before we get the chainsaws out? Apparently not. I asked. I was. Um, I'm. Well, I just got another email at the, people the day, at the end of the day today that I have to read, and um, she was sending me some more information. I just didn't get a chance to read it because I was working on town report. But um, so yeah, it sounds like we're just innocent bystanders. The public service board allows them to do it, and then we just get what we get. Mm. I was able to issue a complaint, but yet I can't, there doesn't seem to be a time frame in which they need to be off the old mm -hmm. pole onto the new one. So well, I'm the, fine. The utilities are just like the railroads and, you know, in, in Vermont, I mean, they're pretty much untouchable and you can't really do much about it. So, um, Unelected officials. Yeah. The, I'd be surprised if they're off in two years. Well, it's already been what? Two more years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's already been two years. Um, it, one thing I wanted to bring up under other business <clears throat> was I talked to Therese today. So I was, you know, going through like I have the last couple of years and, you know, putting together our, our select board uh, synopsis of the past year. And, and I was, you know, I always kind of go back and look at past town meeting day, um, just, you know, just to look at, you know, what we had included and stuff like that. And, and it, it's kind of, you know, eerie, eerily similar that every year the town manager's report and the select board's report is pretty much the same thing. Um, 
you know, other than one says the town, you know, town managers report and the other one says the select board report. So, so I talked to Teresa today and said, you know, it, it just seems awful redundant that we have a report that says the same exact stuff that the town manager has. So, or vice versa. And so I think we've, we've agreed that we were going to, you know, with as long as the board's good with it, as we would go through and just do one joint report, you know, from both identities, um, of the year in review, um, and just leave it at that and be one less, uh, report for, to, to be in the, um, town meeting day brochure. I mean, what does everybody feel about that? That was good to me. Yeah, I would agree with that because there is a lot of redundancy between the two because we work so close together. So it makes sense to do a combined uh, report. And there's only so many, you know, what happens to you happens to me. So, you know, if, if we had a flood, it affects all of us. So a lot of the big items are everything that we're, you know, we're already talking about the same issues. So I don't have a problem with that. I, I was, I have to do my, I'm sure my goal is to get all my town meeting stuff done this week or town report stuff done, excuse me, this week, um, drafting the warrant, the whole thing. So um, I'll kick out a draft and then um, you guys can, whatever, add to it if I've missed something. And, and maybe some towns, you know, maybe the reason why there are two reports is maybe some towns the town manager doesn't agree with the select board, you know, and they have different <laughs> opinions. And, you know, I will say that, you know, seems like our between our board and and the town offices work you know as one and um you know maybe we just show show it you know being a show of solidarity to have one report um produced so um and then maybe when Therese has hers hers done she could just send it out and maybe we could just comment on it if there's something we think maybe needs to be added or or don't forget about but yeah that's always helpful. Yeah, to go back because you know you, I go back through my calendar and different stuff for the year, and it's been a busy year, so it's been a lot going on. Oh, I'm I did get attacked by a uh, fake ladybug floating around here somewhere. I did get a call today from Chris Bump of Vtrans, so he's out of wherever hibernation. So he's going to help me with the RFP for Pinello Bridge, so which was good. So I don't. They've been in hiding, I think, the state employees. So he um, hmm. he reached out to me today. He's like, how's that going? I'm like, I'm waiting for you. So <laughs> he's like, okay. So we should be able to get that out too, which will be good and get that. Mike, I would like to see that done this coming summer. So. Okay. All right. So I guess at this point, we'll just have, um, we, won't, we won't need any more notes or anything. We'll just um, have the board members and Teresa stay on. We'll that point we'll just talk for a few minutes on the dedication piece of the report and that'll be it sounds good bye lisa thank you bye. thank you all bye y'all thank bye. you bye.